We all remember what high school was like, and a lot of us thought we were as cool as Ferris Bueller. Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. Well, every once in a while, the cool kid realizes they're not a righteous dude. They're not popular. And they're not as adorable as they think they are. That's what happened to Nancy Pelosi this weekend. On Saturday, thousands of young libs were getting drunk at a music festival here in Manhattan. It was a concert called Global Citizen, and it was to raise money for climate change, poverty, I don't really know. But Nancy decided to make a little cameo to talk about global warming. Pauly P was even there. This was supposed to be a really cool moment. But Nancy got booed like a villain. Listen. Nancy Pelosi showered with booze in deep blue New York City. This wasn't CPAC. This was a climate change crowd of 20 year olds in a Democrat stronghold. I witnessed something like this firsthand last week. Joe Biden's motorcade was cruising across Sixth Avenue, hundreds of people waiting for it to pass because the street was blocked off. And as the beast drove by and Biden waved out the window, nobody clapped. Nobody cheered. It was this like the president of Yugoslavia had driven by. Nobody cared. Again, this is midtown Manhattan. They voted for Biden over Trump like 90 to 10 percent. This is telling. Think about it. When's the last time you saw someone excited and pumped up at a Biden rally? Well, we pulled some footage and this is what we found. People just sitting there looking bored, not even listening to what he has to say. But hey, I mean, at least these people showed up. The White House can't even get anybody to show up at a Biden rally. These are the pictures they don't want you to see. On TV, the cameras shoot the event to make it look packed. But when you pull out, there's nobody there. And it's free. Maybe people aren't showing up because it's creepy. You gotta say hi to me. <laughs> we go back a long way. She was 12, I was 30, but anyway. Everybody under 15, come here. Come on. What's your name? Would you rather have the president hug a flag or hug your child? <laughs> no one wants to be near Joe Biden. Children or Democrats running for re-election. Nobody. Not even die-hard liberals. Where are you on Biden 24? Well, you know, when oh, he said... Suddenly you have nothing to say. No, no. I feel, I feel for him. I, I, I don't want to pick on him because he's old, but he told us when he was running what? that he may, only, he may only be a one-term president. This is getting pretty awkward. Over the weekend, Jen Psaki, remember her, said Biden's a total failure who doesn't have a record to run on. I think that Democrats, if the election is about uh, who is the most extreme, then they're going to win. Mm -hmm. um, if it is a referendum on the president, they will lose. And they know that. Democrats have been in charge for two years. And their midterm message is that the Republicans are extreme. And now Jen's saying that the Biden agenda is failing. This certainly isn't what we've been hearing the last two years. In fact, when Jen Psaki was in the White House, she made it look like everything was great. So is it just me, or have they just been feeding us one lie after another? Look at the economy. Things aren't going well. Mortgage rates are skyrocketing. Your 401k is down. The stock market is down since Biden was inaugurated. We're poorer as a country. In fact, the average American lost over $4,000 due to inflation. Now, I know what you're thinking. This seems a lot like a recession, but you'd be wrong. Joe Biden says we're not in a recession. Things are just hard right now. And that's why we need the Inflation Reduction Act, which he says will lower costs, which is another lie. It's just a handout for their green donors. You see, 
Democrats want us to change all of our lives to save the planet. They want us to drive an electric car, install solar panels, drink out of paper straws. But here's the thing. They aren't doing these things. No one in the White House has an electric car. Biden doesn't have an electric car. No one has solar panels. Well, there's definitely some pushback happening across the country, we've noticed. The Wall Street Journal is reporting that people in rural Ohio are fighting back against these windmill projects. They're saying it's going to damage their property value. It's going to eat up all their farmland and put wildlife at risk. These are just regular blue-collar people. They don't want windmills, and they don't want solar panels. But guess what? Democrats don't care. Biden's $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill is funding all this stuff. He did sidewalks and bridges, which, by the way, is a little bit of a touchy subject for Joe Biden. There's a lot more Republicans out there taking credit for the new bridges and those bones that are collapsing than actually voted for it. I love going by and they're, you know, and this is a great thing. I voted against it, but this is a great thing. Let me get this straight. Biden wants credit for all the bridges he built. Do you know how many bridges Joe Biden built with all the infrastructure money? One. And it's not even a real bridge that cars drive on. It's a footbridge. It's probably an anti-racist footbridge. But hey, here at Primetime, we want to give credit where credit's due. So yes, Biden is responsible for the anti-racist footbridge in Phoenix. But none of this compares to the crisis that's unfolding on the border. Every month, a new record's broken when it comes to illegals crossing. And it's not just women and children, like they lie to you and say who's coming. Criminals are coming. Cartels are coming. The drugs are pouring in. And Biden's not doing a thing about it. They say the border is secure, but they won't even visit it. Candidate Biden didn't spend a dime or a day in the Rio Grande Valley or really anywhere in Texas for that matter once we got down the home stretch of the general election. You got to be locking eyeballs with the people that you want to fight for and serve and whose votes that you want to win. Jen Psaki, Mike Bloomberg, Beto O'Rourke now are saying Biden's shot. He doesn't do anything. Biden tells us the economy's fine, crime isn't that bad, and the border's secure. It's all disinformation. This entire administration is based on disinformation. And now America is in a place that we haven't been in a long time. Oddly enough, Al Gore predicted this 30 years ago. Fear is up, hope is down. Everything that should be down is up. Everything that should be up is down. I'll give it to Al. That is one thing he predicted that actually came true. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.